So do you have an Office 365 subscription that you're using maybe just for email? Uh, I wanna tell you today that you're probably missing out if that's all you're getting out of that subscription. There are a lot more tools in the Office 365 suite at your disposal for that subscription price, and we're gonna dive into some of those today. I'm Mike Bodell with Bulb Digital, and what I wanna to talk to you about today is leveraging your Office 365 subscription. I think there are a lot of businesses out there today that uh, either have Office 365 subscriptions or are entertaining the idea of, of acquiring one because they basically just need email. Uh, they need a legitimate way to communicate with their customers and their team members. Um, and email is kind of the baseline, the thing that makes the most sense. Um, Office 365 subscriptions is a great way uh, to allow flexibility for your IT costs um, and scalability. You know, as your organization grows, you're just increasing your monthly cost. Um, so you don't, you know, you're not paying for servers. Uh, maybe you're not necessarily paying for managed IT services because you could feel like you can manage it on your own. Um, so those are good reasons to have Office 365. But what I want to talk even more about today is the wide range of tools and services that you get for that base level subscription. Um, things like communication and collaboration tools um, that allow you to stay more connected and engaged with your team and with your customers, um, all the way to you know business apps and automation tools that enable you to you know automate. Uh, certain processes or you know reduce paper shuffling and those types of things allowing your team to focus more on the mission of your business so one last thing before we dive in uh, i'd like to remind you to like or subscribe if you're interested in more of this content or to keep up to date with the things that are changing in office 365 every day so microsoft teams is most commonly used as a communication and collaboration tool where your team members can uh, communicate through persisted context-based chat uh, they can tag each other to send notifications to each other, uh, collaborate on documents together, have access to their contact list, um, even do video conferencing. And all of this is integrated with out your Outlook contact list and calendar. So when you think about using Teams in your organization, what you want to think about is how your organization is divided up uh, and how what people are members of what teams, what purpose they have, uh, and things like that. And you can literally create a team and a context for each of those groups of people in your organization. Uh, thereby making you know, them segmented and more effective uh, and focused on things that they're working on together. The next one I want to talk about is Microsoft Planner. It gives you an organizational and team-based board, task board, uh, that you can manage tasks for your team or your organization. Uh, through Planner, you can uh, basically customize the board to be you know, iteration-based or categorized you know, per the different departments or activities in your organization. You can assign tasks, uh, tag them, and all those types of things. And on top of that, you get a little bit of analytical reporting uh, that comes along with it too, so that you can kind of see how your team is progressing uh, through those tasks. So the use case for something like Microsoft Planner would be one where you don't need a full-fledged project management tool that handles resource leveling and all of the you know, task dependencies and those types of things, but you do need a way to uh, track what's going on and help to hold your team accountable for actually accomplishing those tasks. Uh, so it's similar to some other tools like Asana uh, or some of the other ones that you've seen in the cloud, um, but it's Microsoft's variation of that, uh, and it can be quite effective for uh, small and large teams. The next one, it's a pretty big one, SharePoint. It's the backbone, actually, for a lot of what we're talking about today. It's great at dealing with lists and document libraries um, and, and those types of things, and it's a, honestly a lot of uh, the location for the storage a lot of the content for the tools that we've been talking about. Uh, you can use this for collaboration and communication with your internal team, as well as communication and collaboration with external teams like your customers or vendors. So SharePoint has been around forever, and honestly, it's taken its fair share of criticism uh, for not living up to a lot of the hype and promises uh, that were made. Um, but that's changed now. It's in the cloud, uh, and you know, instead of managing a SharePoint farm like you used to have to do, Microsoft is doing all of that for you. And by the way, you're paying for it already with your Office 365 subscription. One of the great things about SharePoint Online today is that Microsoft has gone well above and beyond when it comes to intuitive user interface design. Uh, so it's much easier to pick up for the end user um, without a lot of training. Uh, it just makes sense to most users uh, that are used to using a lot of web tools today. And finally, for those of you who have been put through the ringer of building corporate intranets or portals uh, using old school SharePoint, Microsoft has come a long way with their new communication hub strategy. Um, so in today's you know, ever-changing and dynamic world of organizations where 
departments and teams are constantly moved around. Um, this new communication hub strategy really makes it a lot easier to manage that content, where it's stored and how it's re related to other content within your portal. So it makes the life of uh, the communications director that much easier uh, because they can move content around, uh, control the branding and all of those types of things uh, in a central way, yet still have that distributed, uh, disconnected storage for content. The next one I'm gonna talk about is OneDrive. OneDrive is a little bit different than Teams or SharePoint in that it's more intended for your own personal storage or your own personal uh, workspace, if you will. Uh, OneDrive is very effective at kind of removing the tether to your office workstation or your office network. So if you think about it, remote work has become essential to most businesses today. And enabling OneDrive for your team members or your organization gives them the flexibility to be able to work from anywhere. They can create, collaborate, uh, and share documents from the, a secure location in the Microsoft Cloud. Um, you eliminate the need to have you know, network access and network storage. Um, every user in your Office 365 tenant, every user that has a subscription gets one terabyte of storage space automatically. And guess what? You're already paying for it. So like many technology changes, the use of OneDrive for your end users is gonna require some discipline and maybe even a little bit of push from IT leadership. I would encourage you to start promoting good habits um, and promote this for your end users and you know, get yourself in a good place where users aren't actually storing the documents they're working on on their desktop or workstation directly. Uh, they're storing them in the cloud and you get yourself out of that scenario where all of a sudden you know, their machine crashes and you have to figure out how to recover that file that they've been working on for the last three months. So up next we have Microsoft Stream. Stream can be used to create store and categorize video content for your organization. Our society today has never been more video driven. And when I think about video, we often think about things like entertainment. But when I think about video, I think about education and learning. So uh, how many of us have ever consumed YouTube content to learn how to fix a car, uh, maybe find a new recipe? Um, it's literally endless, the possibilities that are out there that, of things that you can learn through video. Unlike YouTube, Stream is actually a service that is kind of contained or confined to your organization. So uh, you're not creating video content that ultimately is consumed by the masses, but you are creating video content that is consumed by those in your organization. So what if your team had a way of recording things like how they perform a particular task, maybe reset a password, fill out a new HR form, all of this can become a library of educational resources for your organization. When you need to orient a new hire, you could send them a link to some orientation videos, for example, or let's say somebody moves into your department from another department, maybe you could send them videos of how things actually work in your department. Um, simply send them a link and they can access the videos and uh, get up to speed relatively quickly. So now let's take it a step further and let's say you're conducting a variety of um, you know, organizational meetings, uh, maybe customer meetings, client meetings, or conferences using Microsoft Teams, um, you can start actually recording all of those calls, all of those virtual meetings, for example. And if you ever wonder where those recordings actually go, they go to Microsoft Stream. Uh, so now you're building a library of content that can be accessed by those who were unable to attend that virtual conference, or uh, you could even uh, access that sales call, for example, that you took notes on, but maybe you feel like you've missed a few notes. You can go back and watch that video again um, and see what you missed and get those missed notes. Up next, we have Microsoft Forms. And Microsoft Forms is a tool that can be effectively used to improve your team, your methods, and your organization through feedback and assessment. So you can use Microsoft Forms to solicit feedback from your team members or from your customers, let's say, on a recent project. Uh, you can even create a quiz uh, that you could use to assess uh, you know, how well a particular topic in your organization was communicated. Uh, and on top of that, there's even some analytics that kind of gives you, uh, you know, a good view of, that, uh, of the results of your survey, for example, or the re results of the quiz. Um, and then to make it even more powerful, you can actually import this data or use this data inside of something like Power BI, right? And, and then you can do even more with it. Next up is Power Apps. Power Apps is really a game changer when it comes to actually building business applications. Uh, like Power Automate, Power Apps is a no-code, low-code solution for building business apps. And where it really changes the game is it changes uh, the cost calculation that you might have when you're thinking about experimenting maybe with a new line of business app uh, or building you know, some simple app uh, to improve your business, for example. Uh, because it's no-code, low-code, it does not cost nearly as much as if you had to hire developers to build uh, something from scratch. There are limitations to the free version of Power Apps. 
However, if your business app or your need or your functionality kind of stays within the confines of the Office 365 world, um, the possibilities are pretty limitless. Uh, if you do need to connect to the rest of the world or SQL databases and things like that, you'll want to look at upgrading to a paid version of Power Apps, um, but you can do quite a lot with the free version. And the last thing I would point out is that if you have one of those legacy Microsoft Access database applications that you've maybe been using for the last 20 years and trying to figure out how to you know, keep it up to date and manage that, Power Apps is the solution for that as well. The next one I want to talk about is Power Automate. Uh, this is really a great tool for freeing up valuable time in your business so that your team can focus on their mission. An example would be your mission is you train dogs for a living, right? You want to focus on training dogs. Uh, the tools of your trade are a leash and maybe dog food, as an example, or dog treats. Um, you need to focus on those things. So let something like Power Automate take care of all of the other pieces of that business uh, so that you can focus on producing high quality dogs. Power Automate can be used to virtually automate any process that you might have in your business. So think of something like uh, your accounts payable team and they're required to send those invoices for approval and then ultimately for payment. So what if you could actually monitor that mailbox uh, for invoices and then route them to the appropriate approver and then ultimately send them to your system where payments can get made all in an automated fashion without having uh, any end user touch it except for somebody who's actually approving the payment. Um, so that's just one scenario. Or think of a scenario where you're hiring someone and there's a whole bunch of onboarding process, maybe some orientation videos, uh, some other forms that they need to fill out as a new hire. What if you could kick that whole process off uh, when the hiring manager, for example, received an email uh, with a signature on an offer letter from the candidate? Next, I wanna talk about Power BI. Power BI is a tool that you can use to create compelling visual reports that can be deployed and shared in the cloud with anybody on your team. So most businesses today have data floating around somewhere. Maybe it's in Excel spreadsheets, uh, maybe it's sitting on a file server somewhere uh, in flat files, maybe it's even you know, line of business data in a SQL server table or something like that. Um, you can actually use the free version of Power BI to access all of that data uh, and turn it into compelling visual analytics and reports that your users can use for decision making in your business. And because you can actually deploy Power BI reports to the cloud, you can make all of that reporting and analytics available to your end users without requiring them to VPN in, let's say, to your system to get access to an Excel file on a server somewhere. So uh, that's an, a value add that makes it even more powerful. You know, accessing that information on your mobile device, for example, uh, to help a business leader make a decision uh, can be very important to a business. And the last thing I would like to point out when it comes to Power BI is that it's a very effective tool for putting the power of reporting and analytics at the fingertips of your end users. So uh, you don't necessarily have to be an Excel whiz, for example, to figure out how to produce a report that actually makes sense and answers a lot of good questions. Uh, it's a, you know, once your model is put together, it's literally, you know, drag the fields, configure, a, you know, the type of visual that you want to see, uh, maybe apply some filters, and it's very easy to use. So these tools were just some highlights that we chose, uh, maybe some of our favorites, but ultimately just kind of scratched the surface. There are many other tools that we could talk about uh, that come with your Office 365 subscription, but we'll save those for another video on another day. So one thing I'd really like to stress is that uh, this shift is kind of changing how teams work and ultimately changing organizations' approach to problem solving with technology. And so if this is something that you're getting into and you start to utilize these tools, uh, you're really being effective at, at you know, reducing IT costs overall for your organization, uh, freeing up your team members' time to focus on the core mission of your business, um, and you know, enabling remote work, um, so making your team more effective in an ever more distributed uh, workforce. It's important to note that Microsoft is adding powerful new features to these tools and uh, new tools every week. I'm sure you have some questions about these, or maybe you have a question about a tool that I didn't discuss here today. Uh, feel free to post a comment, uh, leave a question, and we can address that. So if you already have an Office 365 subscription, I would encourage you to get out there and you know, don't be shy. Use the tools. Go one at a time. Make yourself familiar with them. Um, there's really a lot of power in those tools, and I think it could be effective for you. If you like this video, be sure to like or subscribe, and we'll see you next time.